Hey folks, Jackdaw here, with Dragon's Dogma 2 finally here, the sparks between the Arisen and Ulrika are just as fiery as the Dragon's Breath. But how exactly do you romance Ulrika? What steps do you need to take? Well, to win over Ulrika's heart, you need to complete several quests. Fear not, stick with me as I am going to delve into every step to pursue a romantic relationship with her, culminating in a beautiful romance scene. Kicking this off, we do need to share a quick preface on who Ulrika is, because the game really goes out of its way to set her up as a soulmate, or even a canonical romance. So Ulrika is a young leader in the small village of Melv, who owes her life to the Arisen. Saved during the dragon attack that also marked our hero as the Arisen, twice Ulrika played a crucial role in the Arisen's prologue. First, she nursed them back to health after the initial dragon attack, then when the Arisen returned to Melv with no memory, it was seeing Ulrika again that triggered their recollection, which just lovingly sets the scene for a beautiful relationship. So getting started, here are the specific steps I took to romance Ulrika, that you can either hop on from the start with a brand new Arisen, or try and catch up depending on where you're currently at. After leaving Melv once the prologue had wrapped up, and heading to the capital city, to push the main storyline forward, I suggest for you to kick things off with the monster culling quest from Brant, once you meet him and start rolling on with the main quest. If you do the monster culling quest first, it is gonna lead to an early encounter with Ulrika, literally as soon as possible kicking off this romance subplot. I say this from experience, because before I completed the monster culling, I actually did a bunch of other main quests from Brant. And after doing the caged magistrate and I believe one or two more, I went to check on Ulrika in Melv. And while she had more things to say, there was no new quest just yet. It was only after finishing the monster culling quest did her quest line then become available. Take a shot every time I say quest. But that was just my experience. Now before I did complete the monster culling quest, I could actually give Ulrika gifts at this point in Melv, which wasn't an option when when I first met her in the prologue. So naturally, of course, I gave her flowers, maxing out her affinity, making her blush, which is now a sign of max affinity. Also, all NPCs are now logged in the NPC logbook you can find in the main menu. As your Arisen maxes out affinity with NPCs, they unlock new outfits shown in the logbook, along with their basic details, location, and also gift preferences. And so the logbook is a a really helpful tool for tracking friendships and also gift ideas. And so, while Ulrika had no new quests, her max affinity prompted her to then send me a letter and a gift when I returned home to Vernworth. And this dynamic of NPCs at max affinity contacting and gifting you just adds a nice heartwarming depth to their interactions. It was such a shame that I was instead out griffin hunting. But the game does allow for a nice full circle moment on that that we'll get to at the very end. And so promptly after all of that, I started the monster culling main quest, which involves dealing with three monster attacks near Vernworth. Most importantly, it leads you to Harve Village, which is overrun by monsters. Now visiting Harve immediately triggers another quest called Scaly Invaders. Although it is not directly related to Ulrika, it is crucial for her storyline. And this quest simply involves clearing out monsters from have, allowing the villagers to then rebuild. This progression is essential for Ulrika's story, so make sure you do it. After you do clear out the first wave of monsters, the quest then pauses, incenting the Arisen to return to Harv later on in the story. Now before you do leave Harv, if you are visiting for the first time, make sure to activate the port crystal near the water's edge. This allows you to teleport back in the future using a fairy stone, and you absolutely will be teleporting to have quite a few times if you're gonna romance Ulrika. No spoilers just yet. So after my time in Harve, I returned to Vernworth near the Oxcart station, the one that takes you to Melv. And it was here where a man called Donovan asked me to deliver a letter from Sir Margit to Sir Lenart in Melv, kicking off the aptly titled Oxcart Courier Quest. And this quest really serves as a reminder to revisit Melv since the prologue and also 
or how to use the Oxcart system, basically. Having hopped onto an Oxcart to Melve, I found the town under attack by a second dragon, which initiated Ulrika's first quest, the Readvent of Calamity quest. And after somewhat defeating the dragon, basically it ran away, Ulrika thanked me and then suggested why not checking in on Melv periodically when you get the chance, which then became the next prompt in the quest, causing it to pause and giving the Arisen a couple of days to return. As a heads up, during this fight, the Mystic Spearhand Master was present. He then lingered around the village of Melv afterwards, where I unlocked the vocation from him, so bear that in mind when doing this quest. And so my Arisen went back to the capital and after completing another main quest from Brant, didn't need to be anything specific for this, I then returned to Melv. And there I found Ulrika in a heated conversation with a man named Martin, delivering news from the Queen Regent and accusing Ulrika of treason. Ulrika then asked me to stay the night, considering I had made the journey to Melv. And the very next morning, Ulrika was gone. Martin, backed by Lenart, claimed Ulrika left in the night. Martin then appointed himself village leader in her absence. Lenart then confided in my arisen, expressing doubts about Ulrika truly abandoning the village, but fearing drawing suspicion if he searched for her directly. He asked me to inform him if I found Ulrika in the wild. And so began the wild goose chase for Ulrika. Where better to search for Ulrika than Harv, the village we previously rescued and still had an unticked objective on my quest log to go and check in on the village since I saved the townsfolk last time. And so I used a fairy stone to teleport there and found Ulrika amidst more monster attacks in the heart of Harv. After defeating the second wave of monsters, the scaly invaders quest was completed. Ulrika thanked me but explained she couldn't return to Melv until she cleared her name by defeating the dragon. And since the dragon had also attacked Harv, she decided to stay there. Once I knew Ulrika's situation, I returned to Lenart in Melv and informed him that Ulrika was now in Harv village. The conversation then marked the completion of the re-advent of Calamity quest. And so after then taking some time to do some side quests, level up my Mystic Spearhand vocation, I returned to Harv via Ferrystone at night and found Ulrika with some townsfolk right in the middle, starting the Trouble on the Cape quest, which was a very, very short quest where we followed Ulrika and ventured into Stormwind Cave to rescue a few prisoners and fight even more monsters. This quest then ended once we had got the prisoners to safety, as Ulrika was asked to become the new Harv village chief, which she humbly accepted, bringing everything nice and full circle since the incident in Melv. And then, after some more side questing, I think I waited this one out to be honest, then came the pivotal quest, Home is where the hearth is. I took an ox cart back to Melv to see what had happened in Ulrika's absence and since informing Lenart about Ulrika not wanting to come back. And following the drama involving Queen Deesa's scheme, Lenart updated me. He initially planned for Ulrika to return to Melv, but now it was Melv's people seeking refuge in Harv. They needed help escaping, so my Arisen joined the revolt, providing weapons for the villagers and fighting the guards until they eventually surrendered. We offered the people of Melv safe passage to Harv. The quest then instructed me to inform Ulrika in a couple of days about saving the townsfolk of Melv as they set up to come to Harv. And when I returned to Harv after waiting it out for a bit, Ulrika was at the docks. After expressing her gratitude, she then invited me to meet her there at night, where a beautiful and heartwarming romance scene unfolded, and I won't spoil it for you and I'll let you see it for yourself, but this is the culmination of all these quests. My and woke up in the following morning in Ulrika's home, concluding the questline and starting the romance between the couple. Now, the next day, I also returned home back to my house in the capital city and found Ulrika waiting for me in the flesh outside, a truly full circle moment since she sent me a note last time saying that she had just missed my visit. And this was a cute companion quest where I just had to walk Ulrika back to Harv and we walked together, with the result being Ulrika giving 
taking me rift coins and flowers along the way. And apparently this is just a taste of the additional content and other romantic surprises that you can expect after starting this romance with Ulrika. But there you have it, a step-by-step -step guide on how to romance Ulrika and what awaits your love story afterward. I hope this guide has been helpful without spoiling too much of the game's content. Next up, I'm going to be tackling how to romance Wilhelmina when I get the chance. But do let me know if this guide has been helpful and how your Arisen plans to spend their days with Ulrika. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. But of course, I've been Jackdaw and I should go. Whoa, 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 wh